Hey crafters, welcome back to my channel because I'm crafty. My name is Caitlin and this is part two of the Baby Ninja Turtle project. So if you haven't seen part one, um, I would suggest going back to that just so you have a little bit more context, but just a quick TLDR. Uh, the first video is just the prep work, the patterns that I use, kind of how did I get my creative process going to figure out how to make this, whereas this video is the actual construction of this project. So super unique project that was brought to me uh, and I had a lot of fun figuring this out. It was like a bit of a challenge uh, to figure out how to put this together, but this is the kind of project that I like to make. So yeah, I'm gonna get into how did I actually put this whole thing together and the challenges along the way. First, I do wanna mention if you're on TikTok and you're interested, um, I did film a lot of quick little videos um, on this project, so those are on TikTok right now. Uh, you can check those out as well. So the first pattern that I uh, cut out in the previous video was the Teeny Beanie uh, PDF pattern from Patterns for Pirates. This pattern I've made so many times over, it is super easy to make. Um, and with this uh, cotton jersey that I use, I was able to use my uh, overlock with four threads uh, and two needles. Um, so I'm just putting this together with my overlock for everything, so the kind of almost like a darted seam along the top, as well as putting the front and back together, and then applying the band to the bottom. I highly recommend this pattern if you're looking to get into baby clothes, or just need a super easy project to get into knits. This one's super easy and has a lot of like base techniques that you start to build as working with knits, so definitely look this one up. And I'm pretty sure it's still free. It was free when I downloaded it, I haven't looked at it in a while, but definitely check it out. So I'm gonna fold that band in half, and then we have right sides out. I'm gonna quarter it off with my pins and do the same thing with the hat, and then match those quarterings together so that it's all evenly, uh, the stretch will be evenly distributed, and then I'll go ahead and overlock that together. So one of the next things I put together were the little goggles. Um, I decided to interface just the front area. Um, my original plan was to cut out eye holes, but once I sewed it together and saw how it looked without, I decided to leave it unless requested, because um, I think it looks a little bit nicer. Um, I did actually go back and interface the whole piece. Um, once I had turned it right side out after overlocking it together, it still felt a little bit flimsy. Um, and my original plan was to actually attach this to the hat and somehow make it flip up and flip down so that it would look like babies actually wearing and looking through the goggles versus just putting them back up and they're on top of the hat. But in the end, I wanted it to be versatile, so I made it detachable. Um, I just added some extra long ties to the piece that I originally cut out, and then just tied it around the hat so they can tie it on his head, take it off if needed, and then use the hat until he grows out of it. So yeah, this is the finished hat, front and back. We've just got the goggles tied on, like I said, so it can be more versatile. I think it turned out super, super cute. And next we are on to the pants. So this is the petite peg legs from Patterns for Pirates. As well, when I downloaded this with the hat, it was free. So definitely check it out to see if it still is. Another really easy project that if you're looking to start working with knits or making baby clothes, highly recommend this pattern. It's very versatile as well. It has the, the long pant capri and short option. I used a 12 month short option. So I'm just overlocking this together as well, starting with the crotch seams. And then I put that little short leg seam together um, and it's super short because obviously I chose the short option um, and matching up those seams in the middle. And then again, the same thing with the hat. You do the exact same thing with the waistband, except for on the pants, I use the purple fabric. The Ninja Turtles usually have like their color tie and since we're doing Donatello, we have the purple fabric. So I'm doing the same thing. I'm just gonna sew that band together, um, fold it in half with the right sides out, quarter it off with my pins and match those to the quarters of the shorts with the right sides together 
and then I'm going to overlock and stretch um, as I sew so that it's evenly distributed along the top band. Next, we get to move over to my beast. This is my Rimoldi Industrial uh, Two Needle Cover Stitch. Um, this is what I use to finish off the hem of the pants. You don't have to cover stitch something like this. You could overlock it, fold, um, fold up the edge on the inside, and stitch it on top. Um, there's many different ways that you could uh, finish off the edge, but since I do have this machine, I like to use it. Um, and I always start off with a test piece to make sure that it's sewing correctly. Sometimes when putting different threads through, you might need to adjust tensions and things. But this day it was working really well, so I went ahead and hemmed these little shorts. Um, it is a little bit tricky because the holes are so small, um, but I was able to get it through fairly easily this day. Now since this, these leg holes are so small, I chose to do quite a bit of pinning around the outside. Um, usually I also like to do a quick iron just to keep that um, fold down, but I find sometimes with jerseys you can kind of just use your hands and kind of press the fold in place and that works um, just as well. Um, on, for this particular project, that did work well, so I just stayed at the machine um, and kept going. Um, but if your knit is having a bit of a rolling issue, um, doing a light iron on it might help as well. So to finish it off, we're just trimming all the threads and checking out the final stitch to make sure nothing has skipped. Usually with this machine it's pretty good, but sometimes with knits um, the stitch can skip. Um, so you just want to make sure you can fix that up. But these turned out so good. They look so professional and cute. So, so cute. So next I wanted to tackle the turtle shell. So I started off with a layer of batting with my green um, shape on top and then my little uh, shell shapes that I pinned just very close together. Um, the first pin I put fairly loose just to kind of hold it in place. When I got to my sewing machine I started pinning all the sides that I needed to hold. Um, with it being a knit and that um, wool that I have on top is fairly thick. Um, I did have to maneuver and adjust as I went along, so this was a little bit tricky, but actually it went pretty well. I didn't have to unpick anything, thankfully, um, and I used a zigzag stitch um, and just caught the full edge of that wool, and I used just a green uh, thread to match. So once I had that top piece finished and I was looking at it flat, similar to the original inspo photo where it was just a flat piece. I wanted, it needed something more, it needed to be more interesting, so I actually went ahead and started folding some of the open green areas that were in between the shapes that I put on for the shell, and thought, what if I fold it like a dart and make it 3D? I thought that would be way cooler. So I definitely could have done this when I originally cut out the green shapes and cut it so that it would actually have made like more of a dome effect. But I wasn't quite sure with the inspiration photo if that's what we were going for. But once I had sewn the shells on, I was like, this this needs to like come out. It needs to have some shape. So I pinned all of those extra kind of green pieces in between the shells. Um, I, I pinned with that dart shape. But I ended up just including the top two and the side I left um, just flat. Um, so here I'm just playing with that trim piece to make sure that I can still kind of use it around the outside um, to give it that kind of turtle shell edge. And you can see here on the back piece there's two little black strips. So I applied two little black pieces of elastic. 
this is to help hold the shell onto the body and you'll see that part that I make a little bit later in this video. And I also decided that this also felt a little too flimsy so I did add a piece of batting to this back piece as well just to give it a little bit more structure. I think I could have probably also added some interfacing to make it a little bit more stiff to give it more of a flat back um, but it still turned out really well and I think it came together very very cute. So this is what those little dark pieces ended up looking like. I just folded it and pinned it and then I just top stitched it down so I didn't actually sew it like a dart. Um, I just top stitched that fold down and I think it worked really well. So again with knits you want to quarter things off mark your middles everywhere so that you can line things up. So that's the same thing that I did with the shell piece um, so that I get, could make sure that everything was centered. Um, and I wanted to pin it really well because I knew as I was sewing, I've got two pieces of cotton jersey, I've got two layers of batting, it's getting quite thick and I knew that my machine might start pushing things around. So I wanted to make sure that everything was straight it was pinned really well and that I would only have to sew around this once because it definitely could get a little bit tricky if I needed to unpick it. So I just used my domestic machine to sew this. This machine's pretty strong so I didn't have too many issues with it. Uh, I just used a straight stitch um, and then I left a hole at the one end so that I could turn it right side out. Now you can see there's a lot of seam allowance on here. I did end up leaving it on and, and didn't cut it off. Um, I probably could have, but when I turned it inside out, I was actually able to push it to one side. So it actually gave it a bit more of a structure around the edge. So it actually kind of helped me out in the end. So to give it that full 3D effect, I needed to fill it with a little bit of polyfill. Um, so I didn't want to push it too, too much because I still needed that back to be flat. Um, so that was a little bit tricky getting all the batting in place. I really love how this shell was coming together at this point. I could really see just how, how the whole thing was coming together, the whole outfit. Um, so with that hole that I had open and I used to put the polyfill in with, I just hand stitched it closed to give it a bit of a cleaner look. I didn't want to force that underneath my sewing machine. It would have been really tricky. Then the last part that I wanted to do was attach that trim. So I ended up just doing a really light hand stitch around the edge. Um, with this being the wool material, it's kind of felted. Um, I didn't think I needed to actually like overlock the edges or stitch it down. So I just did a really loose um, hand stitch all around the edge. So those little black straps, you can see them in action here. I've put these suspenders through which will help hold the little shell onto the baby's body and keep it still. So to make those suspenders, um, I didn't have any purple elastic or green that matched this outfit. So I took some black elastic um, and kind of made a casing and covered it with that purple material. And again, I always want things to be as versatile as possible. So the bottom section of the suspender, I essentially made like a bra strap out of it um, so that they could make it longer or shorter um, to fit, you know, a little guy's growing torso so maybe they can use these suspenders in the future as well um, and the little clips that I bought are just like a bulk pack from Amazon they came in a pack of 10 um, and they got here pretty quickly so I just use those on all three straps of the suspenders um, and I also made this little uh, D shape um, for Donatello which is the Ninja Turtle that he's he's supposed to be looking like in this photo shoot um, so I wasn't really sure what I was going to do with this shape I just made it as I was cutting out the pieces from part one and it actually became a perfect feature for the suspender so that became like the little emblem that these straps are all attached to in the end so for the little casing um, I did use a really small zigzag um, to sew that strap together and then I'm actually doing a little trick here that I like to use with knits that like to move a lot. Um, so one is to stop and lift up your pedal and let that material relax. 
um, but also use a pin to help you push the fabric through at a more even pace. So sometimes that foot can push that top fabric forward while the bottom's being pulled and you get really uneven um, sewing. So this really worked, this tip really worked for this fabric um, to keep it nice and smooth. So once I had that strap sewn, I turned it right side out and then I just used a safety pin on the end of the elastic to feed it through the casing and then we have matching suspenders for his outfit. So we just finished everything off by stitching everything down, the little emblem and the clips to the um, end of those straps, which I just used a, a small zigzag for. Um, and then I attached the clips to the front of the pants and then the back strap, I'm gonna feed through those two black little elastic straps that I put on the back of the turtle shell and then attach that to the center back of the pants and that helps to keep everything in place. And this is the finished product. I think it turned out really well. It was a really good solution to finding a way to make sure that this could stay on. It's kind of like he's wearing a little backpack um, and then they can use it all again. So that's it. I'm super proud of how this project came together. Very unique project to make, um, which is why I said yes right away, like, can I make this? This is going to be so fun. Um, and it was a bit of a challenge at times, especially figuring out the shell and how we were going to attach it um, and making things versatile. I just added another challenge for myself, um, but I think it's going to be great and they can get multiple uses out of it. So super happy with how this turned out. I hope you guys enjoy this kind of different, unique video. Um, so yeah, let me know down in the comments if you ever have had to make it like a unique item like this, um, maybe for yourself or someone else. Um, it's just super fun to do. I think it's it, it brings out the creativity. And if you want more kind of videos and shots of this, like I said in the beginning, check out TikTok um, and then I'll share some stuff to Instagram as well. Um, if you want any info on the machines that I used, um, I do have that video where I gave a more in-depth review of some of my sewing machines. So if you want more info about my cover stitch machine or the domestic machine, you can check those videos out. First project of 2023, I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!